You've never seen such pure joy. This is amazing. As you can see, the children's faces, they're excited as they open up the gifts for the first time. What makes the gifts more than just gifts is the message that comes with the gift. This is the opportunity for a child to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes. Children are coming to Jesus and children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Millions of children around the world are being impacted by these simple shoebox gifts. One box can touch not just the child, but the whole family. So we need to keep packing those boxes and pray for the children that God will use this in a very special way. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you. Are you ready to take back the night? As you already know, Monday, October 31st, the streets of Colorado Springs and Woodland Park will be filled with kids and families looking for candy. So we're gonna have one great event at all three locations. That's right, it's time for our Radiant Fall Fest. Once again, we'll be shining the light of Jesus at all three of our campuses, but we need you if we're gonna make an impact in our community. As always, we'll need cars for trunk or treat, game leaders for indoor games, as well as help setting up and tearing down. Then of course, there's the invite. 
we all need to go out in force and invite our neighbors and friends to come and join us. Invitations have been provided at your campus to help spread the word. Last year, I mentioned a new family at North Campus that told me they chose Radiant because they attended that fall candy event. But let me also mention a beautiful new family at Woodland Park that has joined the Radiant family because of our Radiant Fall Fest. These stories are not limited to just these. This is why we do this event, to shine a light in the darkness and to see lives change. To sign up, go to the link provided or pick up a form at our Family Visitor Center. This is a big week at Radiant Church. We have Monday night with our Fall Fest where we go into the darkest night and we shine the light of Jesus Christ. And so we encourage you to be here, to bring somebody with you, to invite people to be a part because actually lives are touched by the love of God at our Fall Fest. Then Wednesday night is passionate worship and fervent prayer at our fusion service at 6.30 on Wednesday. Somebody want to say amen to that? It is just such a great time. We hope you'll join us for that as the campuses in Colorado Springs come together and up in Woodland Park, they have their own fusion service. I think they're doing that this week. But it's so good to have all of you with us here today. I want to welcome anybody that this may be your first time to Radiant Church or one of your first times here. We're so glad to have you here. In front of you, you're going to find a connection card. If you would fill that card out when the buckets are passed in just a minute. If you'll drop that in, we would consider that your offering today. But it's such an honor to have you with us. I want to let you know about our Ascent classes. They are classes to help you get better familiarized with Radiant Church. They are a way of learning how Radiant can help you grow in your relationship with God because really it's a spiritual growth track. But in addition to that, it is a pathway for people becoming members. Now, this trimester, we have a number of new members here at Radiant Church. Don't know how many are in this service. However, if you're one of our new members, could you stand to your feet right now? We wanna give you a great big hand. Give you just a minute to stand to your feet. Just stay, remain standing for just a minute. So good to have you here. Let's go ahead and let's pray over our new members. Well, I'm going to pray over them in just a minute. So you guys can be seated. Congratulations. Thank you for becoming part of the Radiant family. Now, today, as we receive this morning's offering, we are going to be praying about a number of things. But one thing is, we can have high expectation. Pastor Kelly is bringing a message today, and I believe that it is a life transformational message. I think too often we fall into a mindset that really isn't a mindset of faith. Pastor Kelly's delivering a message to get us back into the faith zone, to see God do incredible things in our life. At the end of the service, we're actually going to be praying for people to receive divine healing. And I believe the healing power of Christ is going to flow here. And we're going to see healing miracles today. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you as the ushers are coming and we're preparing to receive this morning's offering. We thank you for the opportunity to give. That as we give, we know that it's given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That we are blessed in order to be a blessing to others. And Father, we thank you for this law. That the more we give, the more we get. So that the more we can give again to make a difference in this world. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in the lives of these new members. We thank you for bringing them to Radiant Church, for planting them in this body. We pray they would grow in their faith and they would grow in their relationships with others in this body of Christ and that they would become and fulfill everything that you have for them in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're gonna be doing in our nation in the days ahead. We believe that great things are ahead in our nation. We believe that you are reviving your church, that you're bringing an end to compromising casual Christianity, but you are raising up fire in the body of Christ, that you are pouring out your glory in the church in America, and you are bringing a great awakening to our nation. We pray for this upcoming election. We ask, Lord, that believers who believe your word would step up and vote this election season and vote biblical values. According to your word, we ask you to pull down the ungodly, to raise up the righteous to lead our nation. And Father, we are asking you for a mighty move of your spirit throughout our land. Father, we thank you for this Monday night, this night that is 
in some ways a night of darkness but we thank you that we are going to bring the light of the love of God to each of our campuses and to our city in the mighty name of Jesus so you are drawing people to this fall fest to see their lives touched by the love and the power of Jesus Christ Now, Father, we pray for Pastor Kelly as she delivers this message. We ask for the anointing and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to be upon her. That she would minister the Word of God, not only in word, but in power. And Father, we pray that our hearts would be open and receptive to receive everything you have for us today. And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. The ushers are coming now. Well, good morning. Good morning, Radiant, all of our campuses. I'm at our North Campus this morning, and so I'm going to ask all of our Radiant North Campus folks, let's welcome everyone at Woodland Park, at our Central Campus, and online. Come on, put your hands together. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Well, today, I am bringing a message from the prayer closet, of course, and uh, I think it was about a week and a half ago that Pastor Todd said, hey, Kelly, I think you need to preach um, the week after last week. He said, I think you need to preach in, a, in the, next, the next service, uh, the next weekend, and so immediately he asked me, do you have anything on your heart? (laughs) And what was really on my heart that I wanted to preach on was the prodigal son. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh yeah, I, I, I just, I have this message burning in my heart to, to talk about, you know, the gospel of Luke, the lost coin, the lost sheep and the lost son. And, and I was so excited, but then I went to the prayer closet and I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? And I really sensed that he wanted me to speak on divine healing. Now, I have to back up and tell you that I have been in excruciating chronic pain with my back for months, months and months and months. Um, You know, this morning I was worshiping and, and I touched somebody and opened my eyes and it was Trista who was right next to me, right in front, worshiping Jesus together. And, and I had a flashback to, was it two, three, three Saturdays ago? That we went to her neighborhood and knocked on her door because the Lord sent us to her. And that day I was in horrific back pain. And there were members of the Redemption Squad team who got around me and prayed over me. And God gave me the grace to keep pressing through. But when the Lord spoke to me that I want you to talk about divine healing, um, I'll be real honest. I'll give you some confessions from the prayer closet. I said, Lord, um, I want to do what what you want me to do. I said, but could you confirm that by healing my back, please? (laughs) And and I have to tell you, first of all, I want to say, we as children of God, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, we do not need to beg and plead for healing, okay? Healing is in the atoning work of the cross. His blood was shed so that we could be forgiven of all of our sins. And let me make this clear that there is no more sacrifice for sin. 
There's nothing you can do to sacrifice for your sin, to atone for your sin, but receive the free gift of grace and eternal life and forgiveness through his blood. And so through his blood, we are forgiven and redeemed. And through his broken body, we are made whole. We can receive healing. So we don't have to beg for it. As his sons and daughters, we walk in the authority that he's given us in his name. And we receive it by faith. And we keep pressing in and pressing on and pressing through until it is fully manifested in our bodies. And so that's what I was doing. I had just been praying. And most of the church probably had no idea. Now, if you're on Exodus 17, this may not be true. But most of the church had no idea that I had been living with chronic back pain for months and months and months. And the whole time, decreeing by his wounds, I am healed. And I would speak healing over my back. And I kept decreeing that. Um, but it, God gave me the grace. I had grace to press through. And, and I want to say this. When you are battling and, and fighting, we're not fighting, for, fighting God for our victory or our healing. But we are partnering with heaven to enforce our victory and our healing. And, and so we have to align ourselves with heaven and keep pressing in and pressing through to the victory. And that's what, what I was doing. But it was uh, two weeks ago, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, it will be two weeks. I was sitting in staff meeting and uh, Melissa and Kim were sitting next to me and we were in the biblical citizenship class. And I had to fight back tears because the pain had been going on for so long and it was so intense that I, I, I fought them back hard, but a lot of them slipped through anyway. And so Melissa was concerned, and she leaned over and put her hand on me and just began to pray for me. And I experienced significant relief that day. Well, she then texted me on Saturday and said, how's your back? And I said, it is significantly better. And I said, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed and I am pressing through for full victory. I am going to praise God through to my full victory. And um, I'm not kidding you guys. Within minutes after I sent that text to her, it felt like somebody had taken a spear and driven it through my spine. And my family can testify to this. I could barely walk. I couldn't bend any further than this. They had to help me to the bed, help me to lie down. I couldn't move. I couldn't turn, twist or turn at all without severe, excruciating pain. And um, Faith was my little nursemaid. And bless her heart, she looked so concerned for her mom. And she, she would just rub my back and, and just decree God's healing power over me. And she just looked so concerned. And I laid there in pain laughing. And I told her, I said, Faith, the reason I'm laughing is because the pain is horrendous. I said, but the devil is a liar. And I know that God's word says by his wounds, by the stripes Jesus bore in his own body on the cross, I am healed. So I said, Faith, I know God is healing me. I know he's healing me. And I just kept decreeing that. Well, Sunday morning, this was last Sunday morning, I um, got up. I expected to be completely healed, but I was still in severe pain. And Todd said, well, maybe you need to just stay home today. And I said, if I stay home, the devil wins. There is no way I'm going to let the devil win. You know that's the truth, don't you, Aiden? And so I took three ibuprofen gels, <laughs> gel capsules, and I went praising the Lord. I went with shouts of praise, praising God for my healing and decreeing his word over my pain. I drove to the church in pain, praising God for my, my healing. I walked into the church in pain. I walked down to the front of the worship center in pain, and there was no way I was going to stand still and praise him or sit down and praise him. I got up and I praised him in pain. I mean, I moved as much as I could, dancing and, and jumping as much as I could in pain the whole time and decreeing healing over my body. Melissa said, how are you? And I said, I'm, I'm going to praise my way through to my victory. And that's all I would say. I'm praising my way through to my victory. I went to bed Sunday night in pain, praising my way through to the victory. I got up Monday morning in pain. 
praising my way through to, the, to my victory. And sometime Monday morning, it was before noon, I got up out of a chair and went to walk across the room and realized there was absolutely no pain for the first time. There was no pain whatsoever in my body. And, and y'all, I'm telling you now, I can twist, I can dance, I can bend, I can jump, but I'm in three and a half inch heels, so I'm not going to do that right now. You know, the Lord said, don't test the Lord. You're not to put the Lord, your God, to the test. So I, I just want to praise God for my healing. And he made it abundantly clear, I want you to speak on divine healing today. Because I said, Lord, would you confirm it by healing my back? And so... Then Monday and Tuesday, I'm telling you, I just sense the Lord saying, eliminate everything else from your schedule, and I want you to shut yourself up with me. And that's not just for pastors. God wants you to shut yourself up with him also. And so I carved out as much time as I could Monday and Tuesday, and I ended up, when it was all said and done, with over 50 pages of notes with God speaking to me again about divine healing and his message to the church today concerning his healing power. And so is anyone interested in hearing what the Lord gave me? Now, just for any of you who said, oh no, over 50 pages of notes, we're going to be here all day. (laughs) No, I have a time limit. And so I've condensed it and the Lord's going to help me. So we're going to start today in John chapter 7, verse 38, because as I prayed about this, um, I knew the message for today's, the title for today's message had to be the healing stream, the healing stream, because God is taking us right now on these prophetic streams. And we're going to talk about that because that's what the Lord has been telling me. This is what I want you to focus on for divine healing today, the the healing stream. John 7, verse 38, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. It says, he who believes in me. Now listen, when Jesus says this, he's not talking about the person who lives like the devil and says, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. That's not who he's talking about. And and it's clarified here in the text. It says, Jesus said, he who believes in me, and then it's clarifying, the one who cleaves to, trusts in, and relies on me. Is there anyone like that here today? Is there anyone like that at at Central Campus and Woodland Park today, online, that we do not just believe in Jesus? We didn't pray a prayer somewhere down the road, but then we live like hell the rest of our life and say we believe in Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus is saying, I'm talking to those who really, they cleave to me. They shut themselves up in the prayer closet with me. And listen, if that's not you today, God wants that to be you today and tomorrow and the next day. He said, those who cleave to me, trust in me, rely on me. As the scripture has said, Jesus says this about you. From your innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. And I want to stop and decree that over every passionate follower of Jesus Christ here today and at each of our campuses. So if, if this is your desire to be who Jesus says he wants you to be, I'm going to ask you just to lift your hands to heaven as an act of surrender to him. This isn't about obeying me, so don't let the devil trick you and say, are you going to obey that woman when she tells you to put your hands up? Just, just say, shut up, devil. I just want everything God has for me, so I'm surrendering to him. And, and I want you just to decree this. Make this prophetic decree. This is how you make a prophetic decree. You read the words of Jesus. You read the words of God. And then you decree over your life what God says about you and about your circumstances. So just say this after me. Say, God, I believe in you. I trust in you. I cleave to you. I rely upon you. And therefore... I decree your words over my life from my innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. 
Now give him praise for it. It is written. He has spoken it. And we say yes and amen in Jesus' name. Now that word living here in John chapter 7 verse 38 could be translated healing water. Healing water, reviving water, refreshing, life-giving water. And friends, Jesus said that's the kind of water he wants to flow out of you. He wants streams of healing water, life-giving water to flow from his throne to you and through you. It's not intended just for the pastors or the leaders. It's intended for all of his sons and his daughters. He wants that life-giving, healing, reviving, refreshing water to flow continuously from you. Jesus is the fountain of living water. Continual streams of healing, reviving, life-giving water flow from him and from his throne. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13 God says this. He said, my people have committed two evils. He said, first, they've forsaken me, the fountain of living water. And they have turned to other sources that are broken and cannot give them life-giving water. And God is speaking the same message today to us. And he's saying, he's saying sons and daughters, stop listening to all the other voices and messages and noises in the world. Shut it off and shut it out. The other visuals, the images, and instead, go to the fountain of living water. Go to where healing streams flow. And then healing streams will flow to you and through you, out of you, to bless others. You know, this all makes me think about drinking water. How many of you would say it's hard for you? I mean, you'd rather, like Pastor Corey, go for the Red Bull, right? How many of you are Red Bull Bull people? All right, a few of you. I have never acquired the taste for it. How how about coffee, tea? Let's see, who are the coffee and tea drinkers at all of our campuses? Okay, what about the sugary sodas? Man, look, (laughs) Zach... Trista, man, you like root, like the root beer, like my son Luke or the Dr. Pepper. Or what about pumpkin spice lattes, PSL? And, and so, you know, so many of us, if we're honest, our natural, natural go-to is not water, right? Because our flesh desires the sugar and the caffeine and our, our flesh is going to naturally, I'll tell you what happens to me. If I decide I want something to drink, I gravitate. It's like a natural pull towards the caffeine, towards the coffee. My drink is a cinnamon honey latte. I like just a little organic, raw, local honey drizzled on top with some organic cinnamon. That's the best drink after water. <laughs> but recently, a dear friend of ours had shared with me that uh, he had gone to the doctor several months ago, and the doctor told him that he was in stage four kidney failure. And the doctor said the reason why is, can you guess it? He wasn't drinking enough water. And so after he had told us that several months ago, when I would see him, I used to bring him a latte every time. And uh, then I started bringing him a water and then a latte. Drink the water first, then you can have the latte. And he said when he went back to the doctor, the doctor said his, his kidneys were well, they were healthy, and they were functioning well again. So drink more water. Anybody have your water with you right now? All of this talk is making me thirsty. Drink more water. And and even more importantly, discipline yourself to turn away from the screens, the media, the other voices. And and I'm going to say, you guys, be careful. Be careful to turn away from all the other noise, the clatter, and, and the, the shouts that are coming at us, the secular voices, the secular media, the secular music, turn away from these other things. They're broken cisterns 
which is what God warns us about in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Learn to neglect, not to go to those things. And, and when you have an issue <clears throat> or um, <clears throat> a situation in your life, learn to, instead of immediately going to Google to search out the answer for whatever it is that is bothering you, learn, learn to stop turning from, uh, to other sources and shut yourself up with the fountain of living water. Turn to him. Turn to him. Listen to Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. It says, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. And I know this is no surprise, but it grieves me so deeply to see the masses and not just the younger generation, but my generation and those younger than me and those older than me, seeing the masses consumed with the messages of the world, the messages in media, in movies, in entertainment, in music, the messages that appeal to our flesh while neglecting the very truth, the living water that is life and healing to all of our flesh. The greatest lesson that I have learned in my life is to turn from everything else and shut myself up with the fountain of living water. And, and my dear brothers and sisters, if you will learn that lesson also, you will one day thank me for telling you this over and over and over. I know sometimes I probably sound like a nagging mother, but do you know why mothers nag? It's because they love you so much and they want you to get it. Amen? All the moms said. But I must tell you, it takes discipline. So the message that, that I am bringing this morning, hopefully you're ready to take notes because we're ready to dig in to the first point. But this message was given to me for the church. You know, as, as I shut myself up in the closet, the prayer closet this last week, the Lord took me back to the dream that he gave me one year and 22 days ago on October 8th, 2021. The Lord gave me a dream. Actually, he sent an angel to me in the dream. First time, that was the first time an angel had ever visited me in a dream. And I've never had an angel visit me except in dreams, but that was the first one. And it changed my life. But the Lord has shown me again and again, he did not give me that dream on October 8th, 2021, just for me. He gave it to me because he knew I would be faithful to share it with you. Because he gave it to me for the church, for his sons and his daughters. And so I want to take you back to the portion of the dream that the Lord said, this is where divine healing fits into now and into this dream. The message is clear. And that is that God's power, his healing power is carried on prophetic streams. So in the dream, there was an angel, and the angel took me to a scene, the most beautiful scene I've ever seen. And of course, I didn't see it with my natural eyes. I saw it with spiritual eyes because it was in a dream. But I saw these two magnificent streams, and they seemed to be cut into the earth, into the landscape, and perfectly to where they looked like twins. They looked like twin streams, and they were twisting and turning through these massive oak trees. And I noticed immediately the water in these streams was moving. It almost seemed to be alive. It almost seemed, it was like living water. And it was white, it was pure white, like the color of fresh snow. And it, it seemed to be almost effervescent, like it was bubbly and, and moving like white water. And what, what I noticed next is the, the landscape was going upwards and instead of the water flowing downstream, which is natural, it was moving upstream. It was defying the natural laws of gravity and moving supernaturally upstream as if it was going to the throne of God. 
And so I'm watching this beautiful, magnificent scene, and I realize this angel, um, there's a massive angel behind me to, and over my right shoulder. And I mean, I can sense his presence. And every time I tell this, it's like I can sense, I, I can sense it again. I get that sensation of that awesome presence of the angel. And the angel spoke to me three times. He said, the move of God will be carried on prophetic streams. And then he spoke it again and again. And I'm kind of like the disciples, you know, in Jesus' time where they wouldn't quite get it, but they didn't want Jesus to know they didn't quite get it. But they needed him to know they didn't quite get it because they wanted to understand. And so I didn't speak it out of my mouth, but I thought, what exactly does that mean? And the angel, it was as if he could read my mind. The angel then spoke. He said, you shall decree a thing and it will be established. And then there were many other details, but I'm not going to go into that today. When I woke up, I knew this was from the Lord. And immediately the Lord took me to Job 22, verse 28. It says, you shall also decide and decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Isn't that glorious? I'm telling you, that's a verse. I told Faith, that's a verse that should be on our walls. The only problem in our house is we don't have many walls left where you can fit any more word of God upon them. But the Lord has continually reminded me of this dream and this message and his word concerning our prophetic decrees and our shouts of praise. Listen, your prophetic decrees and your shouts of praise carry the move of God, carry the healing power, the living water, the life-giving healing water of Jesus Christ. Come on, give him praise for that today. It's true. So before we get to the first point, I promise I'm getting there. I, I need to tell you two things. First of all, God is moving. He's moving today, and he's moving in the earth today. Those two streams, those spiritual streams, are truly moving today. He's moving in the midst of his people who hunger and thirst for him. Come on, are any of you hungry and thirsty? And those who believe Hebrews 13, 8, 8 that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So stay hungry for him. Stay thirsty for righteousness. Remember Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, he said that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they're the ones who will be filled to the full. They're the ones who will be satisfied. And if you're filling yourself up with all the things and the messages of the world, you will not hunger and thirst for righteousness. And you will always be left wanting, empty, not satisfied. So hunger and thirst for him. And second, revival is here. And he's just getting started. And anyone who would say, well, are you sure it's here? You, you know, I, I think we're a little bit like the frog in the kettle. And if you've been in the church and the body of Christ for a while, you don't even realize it until you step back and take a broad look when I look back to 16 years ago, when I think back to Radiant Church 16 years ago, and I see Radiant Church today, I say, glory to God, the God of revival is here. He is moving. He is stirring us. Revival is here, and he's just getting started. And as Jack Schultz has reminded me, healing always goes with revival. When there's revival, there is healing. And listen, uh, there are so many healing miracles. I'm not telling you all of them today. I don't have time. I have 50 pages of notes I've got to get through. <laughs> but I will tell you, we continually hear the he healing miracles. Benny Chilcutt, some of you wrote, read Pastor Todd's blog a couple of weeks ago. If you didn't, go back and read those blog posts. And I beg you, read those blog posts. That's what, one of the things that keeps us connected and on the same page and, and keeps you aware of what's happening in the church and in the world today. But he wrote about Benny's healing. Benny was diagnosed with cancer. We, we, he came to church. He was prayed for. He went back to the doctor weeks later. No cancer. So there is healing in the prophetic stream. You will decree a thing, God said, and it shall be established. Your shouts of praise and your prophetic decrees will carry the move of God and bring healing 
to people in need. So number one, God's healing stream is released through you and through me. I I want you to turn to somebody next to you. I don't know why, guys. This is a weird thing God put in me. I just have to do this every time I preach. Turn to the person next to you and say, God's healing stream is to be released through you. And this is how, number one, through your shouts of praise, your shouts of praise. And I began seeing this over and over again and again as I went back through all the healing miracles of Jesus. I mean, take out time just to go back and just go through the healing miracles of Jesus. It will build your faith and your expectancy. But I saw it over and over in the scripture. And and I, I, I wanna bring out today Psalm 103, verses two and three, because we hear it in David, in David's psalm here, in Psalm 103. In verse 2, we hear his shouts of praise. In verse 3, we're going to hear his prophetic decree. But David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So David, and he says, And forget none of his benefits. So, friends, it is important that we forget none of his benefits. And listen, our circumstances, our feelings, our emotions, what somebody else said, what somebody else experienced, does not change what God has said in his word. So remember his word and remember that your praise is a weapon against the strategy and the plans of the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy. So when pain comes, lift up your hands and begin to shout his praises. When doubt and discouragement, defeat and fear, anxiety begins to overwhelm you, you pick up your weapon of praise and you begin to enforce God's victory through your praises. This is so important. And and friends, we do not wait until the battle is over to praise him. We praise him in advance. Our praise truly is a weapon against the plans of the enemy. And when God hears your praises, he sees faith that can move mountains and it activates his power to bring your victory. So praise him by all means. Praise him. Praise him when you're on the mountaintop. Praise him when you're in the dark, lowly, cold valleys because your shouts of praise tear down the strategy and the power of the enemy. Now you may ask, well, how can I praise God when I don't feel like it? Listen, we have got to stop trusting in our feelings and our emotions. Your feelings are fickle and your emotions are up one minute and down the next. Sometimes they're up and down multiple times a day, every day. You cannot trust your feelings and your emotions. And you cannot even trust your circumstances. But do you know what you can trust? You can trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Stop leaning on your feelings and your emotions. Stop leaning on your own understanding. Stop trusting in what you see with your eye. And remember, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Your shouts of praise carry the move of God. So praise him. Praise him. Number two, God's healing power is released through your prophetic decrees. Number two is prophetic decrees. So in verse two, David is shouting his praises. In verse three, he lifts up his voice and he is decreeing who God is. And he says, he says of God, who forgives all of your iniquities and who heals all of your diseases. Listen, stop, please. I am pleading with you on behalf of the Lord himself. Stop decreeing death, sickness, doubt, destruction, and darkness. And begin to decree life and healing, hope, power, and victory. Come on, can I get an amen today? Let the shouts of praise and prophetic decrees flow out of you like rivers, like streams of healing water. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21 
says a man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Listen, this isn't speaking about natural food and bellies. It is speaking about your innermost being and the words that come out of your mouth. It says, for, for he will be satisfied with the consequences of his word. If we really believed God and believed his word is true, we would be way more careful about what we allow to fly out of these lips. Because, and how many of you know, God's not a man that he should lie. His word is true. You can count on it. You can trust it. And he said, whatsoever you sow, that you will also reap. So sow right things. It goes on to say, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. And as I meditated on his word, this message was crystal clear. I knew the Lord was speaking to me and he was saying, Kelly, my people speak words of death, defeat, doubt, and darkness, doom, and despair while expecting life and peace, healing, and victory. And he said, this can't be. That's not how it works. You will eat the consequences of what you allow to fly out of your mouth. So it's time. It's time for you and I to partner with heaven and rebel against hell through the words that come out of our mouths, the prophetic decrees. Because listen, God is not a man that he should lie. You are making prophetic decrees every day. And the prophetic decrees that you're making are either bringing forth life or death, light or darkness, destruction or healing, joy or depression. So choose wisely. The words we speak are powerful. Put a guard over your mouth and a watch over your lips and speak right things. Stop decreeing what you feel. Just because you feel it doesn't mean you have to say it. Come on. I I need to say that again. Just because you feel something doesn't mean you have to say it. Put a guard over your mouth and a watch over your lips. Know that your words are prophetic. And, and choose them carefully. And, and friends, if we can only speak and decree victory when we see victory, that's not true faith. Faith is believing before we see the answer. Faith is what was demonstrated through Abraham. When God told him, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Your descendants are as going, going to be as numerous as the sands on the seashore. And he said, you're, you're going to have a child. You and Sarah are going to have a child. And through that child will come the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And Abraham, who considered his own body as good as dead because he was almost 100, And he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb that she had never been able to conceive and have a child. And she was almost 90. In spite of his circumstances, he kept making prophetic decrees. He kept decreeing the promise of God over his life and over Sarah's life. Did he mess up and falter along the way? Yep. But he just recalibrated and got back and right back into alignment with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He didn't wait until he saw the answer to praise God and decree God's promises. He he prophesied those decrees in advance. And not for just a month or two, not a year or two, not a decade or two. He prophetically decreed what God had said that was absolutely impossible in his own physical strength and in his own humanity. He decreed it and decreed it and decreed it and decreed it. What if he would have stopped after a few decades and said, said, well, I guess God isn't going to do what he said he would do. Friends, don't ever give up. Don't stop making those prophetic decrees, decreeing what God has said over and against what anyone else says and over and against what your circumstances, your feelings, and your emotions tell you. Come on, give God praise for his truth today. Number three. God's healing power is released through your shouts of praise, your prophetic decrees, and through unwavering faith. We must exercise unwavering faith. And there is no guilt, shame, or condemnation to anyone here today. Listen, if you feel guilt, shame, and condemnation is coming from hell, it's not coming from heaven. But now if you feel conviction to where you say, ooh, 
I think I need to change the way I think and see things. I need to change my actions. That's from the Holy Spirit. But we have to have unwavering faith. What is unwavering faith? It's faith that's tenacious. It's faith that is unstoppable. It's persevering faith. It's, it's the kind of faith we see in people like Dean Newton. <laughs> it's persevering, tenacious faith that will not comply with any agenda that is not God's. It is faith that will not bow down to circumstances, to feelings, to emotions, but it keeps pressing on and it keeps pressing in to see the victory against all odds. It's the kind of faith we see in the woman in Mark chapter five. You remember the woman who had an issue of blood. The Bible says she had an issue of blood for 12 years. And it said she had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians. And she had spent all that she had and was no better. Instead, she had grown worse. But she didn't give up. She had heard reports concerning Jesus. And she came up behind Jesus in the throng and touched his garment. Now, I want you to get this. Verse 28. For she kept saying, I'm reading the Amplified Classic and the translation here of that verse, the literal, the literal translation is not that she just said it once, but she kept saying. In other words, the Bible is telling us she prophetically decreed this over and over and over. We don't know how many times she decreed it, but she had tenacious, unwavering faith, and she didn't even have the word of God like we do. But she had tenacious, unwavering faith that would not give up. She prophetically decreed, if only I touch his garments, I shall be healed. I will be healed. And, and I just picture this, this woman who has suffered for so many years. And she's, saying, she's prophetically decreeing, I have to touch his garment. If I touch him, I'll be healed. If I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She didn't say, well, maybe he might heal me. Oh, I sure hope he'll heal me. Well, maybe if if I just get a hold of him and plead with him hard enough. No, she made a bold prophetic decree. And this is so important for you and I. This is tenacious, unwavering faith that won't give up. And I want you to read down verse 34. At the end, Jesus says to her daughter, your faith has made you well. And in the Amplified Classic, it says, your faith, your trust and confidence in me, Jesus. It's not faith in faith. It's not faith in another person. It's not faith in a, in a faith healer. It's faith in Jesus. He said, daughter, your faith in me has restored you to health. And then he said, I go in peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. Listen, some of you have been dealing with distressing bodily diseases for a lengthy amount of time. And God wants to encourage you today to be like this woman. Don't give up. Keep pressing in. Now, don't beg for your healing. It's already provided for you in the atoning work of Jesus on the cross. You be like this woman and, and fill yourself up full of faith. And you say, well, how do I do that? Romans ten seventeen says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You saturate yourself in him, saturate yourself in his presence, saturate yourself in his word, shut off all the other voices that, that dampen your faith and turn to the fountain of living water. You, you trust in the Lord with all your heart and then you begin to shout his praises. The Lord is my healer. I want to quickly tell you, some of you have heard this testimony before, but over two years ago, I had suffered with debilitating, um, a debilitating condition in my knees. And I was told that you'll probably have to have injections, you'll have to have knee replacement surgery. And, and I thought, I'm too young for that. And, and I'm just not going to bow down to that and accept that. And instead, I went to God's word and I said, Lord, I know healing is in the atoning work of Jesus on the cross. 
And healing is the children's bread. I'm your child. I'm your daughter. And so I stood on God's promise for healing in my knees. And rather than, and, and this, I'm gonna, I want to say this. I want to make this abundantly clear. God has used doctors in my life at time, times also. And I'm thankful that God gives doctors wisdom. I am not saying you never go to a doctor. So I, I don't know. I just felt like I have to clarify that. I am simply sharing with you I was sick and then I was healed. But it was really bad. I could barely walk, just getting up the few little stairs to our platforms at our, at our campuses was extremely painful and difficult. I had to crawl up the stairs to kiss our kids goodnight uh, when they went to bed at night, and then I'd scoot down on my rear to get back down the stairs. Sometimes, there were times when I would walk downstairs to where Todd was in the basement when he would be studying, and, and, and I can remember him going, oh, just out of sympathy, your poor knees. And I would say, no, I break that curse in Jesus' name. My knees are not poor. My knees are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And by his wounds, I am healed. And I, I wasn't saying that to be obnoxious. I was making my prophetic decrees. And I was decreeing what God's word said over my feelings, over the pain, over what others had told me about the condition of my knees. And I kept praising God for my healing. But guys, I, I asked Todd the other day, I said, how long did I suffer with my knees like that? And he said, it was a long time. He said, I think it was at least a year. And um, we were coming up on winter retreat where I was going to go with the high school students to Quaker Ridge up in the mountains in Woodland Park. And... Um, I was in the prayer closet and I said, Lord, I am trusting you for healing in my knees and I, I need it to be manifested now. And, and so uh, I said, Lord, I, I need full victory in my knees now before I go hang out with the teenagers because I can't run around with the teenagers like this. And before we went, before we loaded up on buses and headed up the mountain, my knees were completely and fully healed. All right, I'm out of time. So let me just give you the last two points. Receiving and extending forgiveness. I find it interesting that so many accounts of Jesus healing sick people included the forgiveness of sins. That someone would be brought to him and he would say first, sons, your sins are forgiven you. Listen, he wants you to know he forgives you. He doesn't withhold forgiveness from you. Now, the devil will come and lie to you. God can't heal you. He's God is punishing you for the sins that you've committed in your past. That's a lie from hell. Jesus shed his blood to forgive you of all your sins. So you give him praise for that. Hallelujah. And he offered his body up to be broken so that we could be healed. So receive his forgiveness and extend his forgiveness. Don't withhold forgiveness from others. And number five, is obedience. In James 2.17, it says, faith, if it does not have works, if it does not have deeds and actions of obedience to back it up, by itself is destitute of power. It's inoperative and dead. So we have got to have faith and then we walk out in obedience. How do we do that? Well, Jesus said these signs will follow those who believe. He said, in my name, in the authority of his name, he said, you will speak in other tongues. You will cast out demons. You can take up a deadly serpent. Now, that's people that like play with serpents. That's just weird. That is not of the Lord. I'm not talking about that. I mean, he's just saying nothing can harm you. When, when those who believe in me, he said, you can drink any deadly thing and it will not harm you. And he said, and you will lay hands on sick and they will recover. So now... We have faith. We step out in his name and the authority of his name and we lay hands on people and we expect them to recover. Yeah. We make our prophetic decrees over them and we don't plead for healing. We decree God's healing word over their life. We release the healing power of Jesus and we expect them to be made whole and well. We walk in obedience. But I want to point out to conclude here, Luke 17 I'm going way too long. I know. I know, Todd. I love you, honey. <laughs> Luke 17, the, the 10 lepers come to Jesus. The 10 lepers come to him, and 
Jesus, they, they want to be healed, and Jesus doesn't even pray a prayer or anything. He just tells them, go, go show yourselves to the priest. And that's what they would do after they were healed. They'd go show themselves, present themselves to the priest, so the priest could give them the okay to come back into community. And they obeyed him. And as they obeyed him, as they went, they received their healing. Listen, sometimes we haven't received our healing yet because we haven't obeyed the Lord in offering up shouts of praises over and against the plans of the enemy and decreeing, making our prophetic decrees. And sometimes, I mean, it, it is a true battle and it's a test of faith. It's a walk of faith. We have to keep walking like Abraham. We have to keep going and pressing in, pressing through to our victory. All right. I'm going to pray, and then I want every person at every campus to come forward at whatever campus you're at, not yet, but, but when I, I give that signal, if you need healing in your body, I want you to come to the front of, of each of the campuses, and then we're going to do something different because this is what the Lord has shown me to do, because God doesn't, just, God doesn't raise up superstars so that people will look to superstars and think, oh, if, if, if just that, that human being can pray for me, I'll be healed. No, he wants his healing power to flow through every one of his sons and his daughters. He wants every one of us to walk in the authority that he's given us in his name and decree healing over our bodies, over one another. In James, the book of James, we're told, pray for one another so that you, uh, so that you can be healed. And so what we're going to do in just a few moments, the worship teams can go ahead at each campus and come back to the platform. And what we're going to do, they're going to softly play. They're going to play and sing the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Hebrew name of Jesus, because it's in his name. It's in the authority of his name. I, there's no authority in the name of Kelly. There's no authority in, the, in any other name but the name of Jesus. And, and then I want you to come to the front, full of faith, and we're going to pray for each other. But we're not going to beg and plead. No begging and pleading for healing in this house. But instead, by faith and in the authority of his name, we will decree healing over each other. And then we will praise him and thank him that he is the Lord Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord, our healer. And we will continue to praise him and thank him and press through until we see the full victory. Amen? Amen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead at this time and turn it over to the pastors at the other campuses. God bless you. We love you. And we release God's healing power to you and through you and out of you. In Jesus' name, amen. What an encouraging, convicting, and faith-filled message. Today, before we pray for those who need healing in their bodies, I want to first of all give people an opportunity who don't know Christ to come to Christ. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid for our sins. He dealt with our sins. He also ultimately dealt with our sicknesses. Because someday, if you believe in Jesus, you're going to give a, a resurrection body without any sickness or disease. But today, if you have not received Christ but would like to, I want to pray with you today. Let's have heads bowed. Let's have eyes closed. If today you say, I'm away from God, but I want to get right with Christ, could you slip your hand up high? Say, that's me today, Pastor. I need to get right with God. See those hands going up today. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray with you today. So let's pray together. At all of uh, our campuses, those watching online. And so let's pray this together. Say, dear God, I know that I've sinned. But I believe Jesus died in my place. But God, you raised him from the dead. And Jesus... I confess your Lord. Please be the Lord of my life. Wash away my sin and give me the power to follow you. 
Now, if you prayed a prayer like that today, God has begun a good work in your life. He has washed away your sins and you have begun on a path of following Him. And so we're here to help you in your walk with God. If you'll reach in front of you, grab one of our connection cards that says, I said yes to Jesus, we would be certain to send you some material to help you in your walk with God. If you'll drop it off on the way out or better yet, bring it at the very end to one of our prayer teams and they would be delighted to pray with you and give you that gift. Now, today, Kelly has uh, talked about divine healing and we're gonna give everyone here an opportunity to receive that today. She said we're not begging for healing. We are simply receiving what Christ has already done in the authority of the name of Jesus. So let's stand to our feet. Let's give a hand to those who made a commitment to Christ today because there were some who did that. We're so excited for you. But I'm going to ask those who today, you want to receive healing in your body. You want to proclaim what God has said over your body and over your life. Why don't you come forward right now across this auditorium. We had such an incredible response at the 9 o'clock service. We're seeing that again now. It's amazing, these physical bodies and this physical world, how they can be affected. And we have seen so many healing miracles here. I have in my office today two reports from Ben Chilcutt that Kelly mentioned. One report shows cancer in his body. He sent me another report that said no cancer in his body. And that happened here in this auditorium. So right now, I'm going to begin to pray. Let's just receive our healing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ dealt with sin and sickness on the cross. And we thank you that even now we can receive foretastes of divine healing. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you that we know your will is divine health. There's no question about that. So right now we receive your healing and we decree our healing in Jesus' name. That in Isaiah 53, you took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We declare that the Son of Righteousness has arisen with healing in his wings. We bless the Lord and we forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all of our diseases. So right now, we declare healing in our physical body. We command all pain, all discomfort, all disease to go. We command diabetes to go. We command cancers to go. We command heart disease to go. And we speak healing and wholeness in every cell of our bodies. Right now we receive and appropriate what Christ did on the cross. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, we receive our healing. Lord, we ask you to stretch forth your hand right now to bring healing and wholeness to every sick body. May the Lord Jesus himself bring healing. Now let's begin to give him praise and honor and just thank him. Lord, we thank you that you're our healer. You're the one who took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You're a healing Jesus. You're a saving Jesus. You're a delivering God. We honor you and we praise your name. We declare your name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Father, we thank you for it right now. We thank you for healing miracles and healing grace flowing across this auditorium, flowing across this altar area. And Lord, we decree it and declare it. We thank you for it. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanksgiving. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Now just... Just begin to do what you couldn't do before. Just begin to do what you couldn't do before. Lord, we thank you for healing. We thank you for wholeness. We thank you for wellness. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, let me ask right now, has anybody already experienced a healing in their body? Any kind of pain that's been relieved? You just know that God has touched you and healed you. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. I want to tell you, some of you were at Communion, Colorado. There I had people pray for me, and I had serious pain in my left shoulder that has left. 
We have a healing God. We have a healing God. And I believe that we're going to begin to see healing miracles as never before. There's one other thing I want to pray before we go. That we not only receive healing, but God wants to use us to bring healing to others. And I, I believe this is going to happen this week. You're going to be in your job or you're going to be just out going somewhere. And you're going to talk to somebody who has pain in their body who needs healing I want to encourage you by faith to just ask them can I pray for you you would you would be amazed at how disarming that is people are willing to receive prayer and then just pray a simple prayer of faith and let's see God move let's see God move father I thank you for every person here today we declare healing I believe, Lord, this week we're going to receive emails from dozens of people at Radiant Church who received healing miracles. And now, Father, I release them under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to go out in the power of God to pray for the sick and see them recover. We pray for a river, a stream of healing flowing from Radiant Church into this city in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Don't forget, we have Fall Fest Monday night and Wednesday night, Fusion. We'll look forward to seeing you there. God bless. And you're dismissed. Prayer teams are coming. If you need prayer in any other area of your life or you'd even like prayer for healing, you come and let them pray with you today. God bless you.